We might be drunk, we might be drunk As long as we are hanging out, you know we might be drunk Raise a glass, let's talk shit Pet peeves, Rex, and a bit Maybe drunk, we might be drunk Yeah Holy hell, here we are, we're in the bar, folks. This is it, the booze den, the den of sin, the... I hate man cave, anything but man, man cave. Man cave is annoying. Yeah. Anything man in front, like, you're going on a little man date. And right. Like, you know, I'm getting dinner with a friend. Exactly, it's man, man date. I hate all the man stuff. Manatee, you name it. Uh, but yeah, so here we are, Matt built us a bar, it's insane. We're going to put fan art on I the wall. I didn't even notice the Polly Walnut Soprano thing. This is crazy. It's crazy. We got Rodney Records. We got Meta Knights. Uh, this, this racket makes me think of uh, when they're playing tennis in Annie Hall for some reason. Oh, yeah. It just feels very New York. That's true. I like it. Yeah, this whole thing's a racket. And uh, we're figuring it out. We got a bartender over here. What's going on, Dan? How's it going, guys? You're six twelve. You got a great head of hair. You got an apron on. What's shaking? You look like one of the Inglorious Bastards. Oh yeah, yeah. You look bad. At, I don't know. Maybe like a mix of like Eli Roth and right. uh, any of the other ones. Like a like you got a badass vibe. Is my hey, point. I'll take it. I, I got the sh- size shaved, but I got it faded so I don't look too much like a Nazi. You know. <laughs> Perfect. We'll call you the Beer Jew instead <laughs> of the Bear Jew. There we go. I'll take the that. Beer Jew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I love it. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> he looked huge in that. Eli Roth is like 5'10", but they filmed him. And he looked so manly at the chest hair. I don't know if this is true, but I, I heard somewhere that it was supposed to be a bigger role and it was supposed to be Sandler, but he dropped out to do Funny People because Apatow is... But he's great in Funny People. He is, but... Well, that's a whole movie about him, but yeah. I feel like Sandler's not tough. I like him, but... But he but no, but 90s Sandler was just like fucking shit up, I feel like. That's true. Happy Gilmore, he's the spaz. Oh, good you know? point. Good point. Get in your hole! Yeah, that's true. He could go angry. But <laughs> I also funny. heard that uh, they were going to make Bob Barker one of the Nazis, and he beats the shit out of Sandler, <laughs> but they scrapped the whole thing after that. Right, right. You're not pure white, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Did you hear Tarantino on, on any of the podcasts? I, well, I listen to everyone. I'm a huge fan. He's listen to everything. He's the best. He had some great points. I got to tell you, yeah. we're talking directors and screenwriter. I watched this documentary called Milius. It's about John Milius. He wrote Apocalypse Now. He wrote Red Dawn. You know the scene in Jaws where they go, it's a doll's eyes. Yeah, yeah. He wrote that. Whoa. The industry hated him. He hated Hollywood, but he was such a genius t- screenwriter that Two things, and I when I saw this, I was like, I gotta tell Sammy about this. They hated him in the uh, in the room, and he would go, he would go pitch a show, and he's like, they hate me, they hate me, he'd pitch a movie, and they're like, no, you're a genius, just pitch. So he pitched this movie, big detailed long story. They go, I don't know, we we hate it, and he goes, well, not everybody likes Macbeth. He pitched to Macbeth, and they turned it down. So he just proved to them. Another wow. story, he wrote a script. They go, oh, it's too edgy, it's too dark, you got to clean it up. So they had a guy cleaning up, like a little nerd guy. And they said, whatever pages you change, make those pages blue. They turned their script in with all blue pages. It was the same script, and they go, we love it. Wow. So it just They just hated you. him. They hated him. Damn. But what? they thought, because the other guy wrote it, and they changed it, that this will be great now. But That's like, the, did you ever hear the Val Kilmer story about how he tried to get uh, The Doors, Oliver Stone? I don't know if it's true. It's one of those like old Hollywood tales right. where apparently the, the, the rumor is that He's like, please give me this part. I know I can play Jim Morrison. Yeah. He's like, if you don't believe me, I'm going to send three clips of, or two clips of Jim Morrison, one of me. If you can tell them apart, I'll stop bothering you. Uh huh. And he just sent three clips of Jim Morrison. Ah, uh, I've heard that. That's fucking That's great. pretty cool. Good for Val. He's got cancer. Is he all right? He's got the thing. Dude, he's such a badass. I, lo- I know. I love, dude. I loved Val Kilmer, man. Love Heat. Love Top Secret. We love you, Kiss, Valley. kiss, bang, bang. Yes, he's great. I was talking to uh, a friend once, and what I've heard is that he, like, he'll just, because he was in, uh, fuck, he was in some movie. Top Gun. No, 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 no. He's great in Top Gun. Well, anyway, he texts a guy, a comedian, I can't say his name, who he didn't know that well, but Mm. he's like, hey, can I sleep at your place for five, for five days? My place is under, (laughs) (laughs) my place is under construction. Can I, 
just stay at your place. And the guy's like, I barely know this guy. This mm. is pretty weird. And he just has like Val Kilmer walking around his apartment in underwear. Just, <laughs> wow. He's like, Val Kilmer's just walking around my place. This is the weirdest thing ever. He's like, he's a great guy. He's yeah. just, it's just, it's Val Kilmer. It's weird. That's the cool thing about the old days. You could just walk around on a guy. That would be on TikTok now and all these reels. No, this shit. wasn't that long ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the guy he stayed with just wasn't an asshole. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> sorry. I'm all, I'm all cuffed up here. I'm sorry. <laughs> and you, I can't believe. First off, you're engaged. Oh, geez, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't mention that you were gonna pop the question. Yeah, he's a hot guy. No, I just, uh, I don't know. I don't want to bother anybody. It's, it's how is that? You think confiding in a friend is a bother? That's something you need to bring up in therapy. Probably, yeah. Because I text Liz and I was like, Mark is engaged, and he goes, What? Ah, I was like, you, I'm, I would hope you told one of us you were gonna do it. Yeah, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I just, I just was so focused on nailing it. And by the way, I flubbed the hole and guy, I choked. Really? Well, it's so intimate. Yeah, I got intimacy issues. So I got down on one knee and I was like, I love you. And she's like, yeah. And, uh, I, I said, you know, will you marry me and all that? And, you know, it was great. She cried. Well, will you marry me? Yeah. 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 So I, I speak for a living. I'm on stage every night and I, I was on one knee and I just, choked damn it's so heavy it's a heavy moment yeah it is a heavy moment yeah and it, it's different you see the movies you see all this shit but uh you know in the in the moment it's it's different and we had a great moment i did it and there was two old people on the beach sunbathing two like fat 80 year olds and after i did it she's hugging me we're crying and she go the old people go oh that's the, nice there's a nice little that's all right rom-com moment there did you do any special that night Oh yeah, we were in Martha's Vineyard. We we told the family. We it was all perfect. Nice. Yeah, very how, romantic. How did, your, did your family react? Like, were they excited? Eh, you know, they they gave me a high five and a shoulder punch. <laughs> it was good. It was perfect. They were cool. They just happy I'm doing something. Uh, you know, adult. <laughs> what they a want... weird reaction to marriage. Yeah. There we go. All right. This calls for a drink, if anything, right? Say it again. I think this calls for a drink, if anything. Yes. Hello. What's up, Mark? Can we introduce Dan? Yeah, yeah. The beer Jew. Dan is here. He's a cocktail cockologist. What is it? Mixologist. Yeah, I'm a cocktail architect. You know, liquor engineer, all those things. Oh shit. <laughs> well, we got our own rye on the way, so. Uh, oh, we're ready for Fat Cat for sure. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah. All right. He's cool. What do you got here? This is an amaretto and bourbon sour. Oh, wow. shit. Damn. I didn't know they made this. Today. This is exciting. High end. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is a recipe I'm working on, so uh, you guys get to try it before it comes out. Oh, damn. Last week we had White Claws, so we're really stepping it up here. You know, I'll make White Claws. <laughs> I don't care, man. Yeah? <laughs> All right. What's, is this like your... Like, it, it, are you always trying to outdo yourself, like, with recipes? Like, are you just working shit out all the time? Oh, constantly. I mean, like, we're constantly making recipes and, like, new drinks and everything. And right now I'm working on, like, a... Actually, right now I'm trying to run a full recipe sheet of uh, bodega bartending. So, like, ah. next to every liquor store, there's a bodega, right? Yeah. And what do you do when you're pre-gaming? You get, like, a bottle of booze and some shitty mixer. And you go and take either, like, really sad quick shots... You pet a cat. Yeah, right. yeah, you pet a cat or, you know, like, yeah. or you mix it together. But uh, for me, like, I'm doing uh, recipes where you can make, like, elevated drink, like a nice whiskey sour like this, with only things you find at your bodega and at your average liquor ah, store. Ah, I like it. The like poor to, man's liquor. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the point where, like, you don't even need a shaker. You got hot and sour soup last night. Use that tin. Poke, shake it up. Poke holes in it. That's your strainer right Holy there. hell. Nice. Like a life hack. Like Exactly. Sam. Hack for life. <laughs> all right. Hack for alcoholism. Uh, all exciting, right. Exciting, man. Very yeah. exciting. All right. What is the real height? Six seven. Six seven. Yeah. Are you six seven? <laughs> yep. Oh my god. I used to work at a carnival. <laughs> oh man, look at they got swords in there. Holy yeah. shit. Hey, come on. Drink it on antibiotics, folks. What other pot is doing that? <laughs> This is, not, this is not bragging rights. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Chris Rock joke. I never see my kids. What, what do you want, want a cookie? cookie? <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah, that's pretty good, man. I that's like delightful. drinks where like, see, I like the taste of alcohol, but it's nice to have a drink that's that smooth. 
Hell yeah. Thank, Thank you. Right? And the circular ball of ice is a nice touch there. Yeah. You like balls near your mouth, don't you? <laughs> there we go. See, I knew it. it. Thank you. No, I hey. like the balls of ice. They're really cool, man. Hey, man, new new studio. You got fancy new drinks. There you go. You, <laughs> you got that right. You got to keep it classy now, right? This you feels moving on up. Feels very out of place. I mean, we love having you here. We love the studio. We got Salacuse's fat ass on the on the blower <laughs> here, but uh, this. <laughs> This is not, I'm not used to this. <laughs> this does, Salakai's does, he kind of looks like the uncle that falls asleep after Thanksgiving right now, doesn't he? Uh, that's true. Isn't that recliner? Yes, he does. <laughs> a man who has his chair. You know those, two, when, <laughs> right, when like right. my grandpa he was like that, they were like, no one sit in grandpa's chair. And yeah. Like, it's not like that special chair, like to him it is. That's true. Frazier, the dad with the chair. Yeah, my grandpa had the chair too. That is so weird. That just kind of happens. My grandfather had an ice maker in his house, and I remember thinking as a kid, like, this is the height of luxury. He's got an ice shaker, like a maker. He would scoop it. Good times. I love it, man. Well, this is exciting. So you're you're going to be married. I can't believe you're going to be married. I've known you for so... It's, it is adult. It's funny to say... It's funny to call marriage adult. Yeah. But yeah. it is. There are it no is. kids getting married. It is adult. Totally. And I will say it's a load off. You know, you're just like, all right. So we did have a good night. Yeah, exactly. We we got we got that going. She's got a ring. Yeah. By the way, the ring is a is a nightmare to do. You got to figure that out. Get the sizing. What she How'd wants. How do that? I I hit up her sister. Thank God. Wow. That was a whole behind the scenes thing. But you think like, oh, I'll give her a ring. But you got to get the right ring. What if she hates the ring? It's it's yeah, a that's lot. a big one. And then she's like, "Where's the wedding gonna be? What's what food?" I'm like, ah, "I thought I was done." Oh my god. Yeah. So. Buckle up, Fatty. Damn, you gotta. You're gonna have to give us a far out day, so we're not. Uh, we're not working. Well, we're doing it in New Orleans, and we're gonna do it like wow. on, a, on a weekday. So we'll try to get some comics. But I understand it's a, New it's a destination. Destination wedding. New, no how do you decide New Orleans? I mean, she picked it. Really? She lives in Boston. Boston's ugly and boring. You know, Fun New Orleans town. is a is a wild place for a wedding. It's a party town. You go there for celebration, for booze, for weddings, for funerals. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It, I was I was just in Nashville, man. I got to tell you, like I'd never been to Nashville, like so fun. Broadway, that's like Bourbon Street, fuck Cancun. That's crazy. <laughs> in yeah, Nashville. it's a honky tonk bourbon. They are basically they party, man. Oh yeah, it's Someone bachelorettes had, as far as the eye can see. I've never seen more tiaras in my life. Someone had to be removed from my show because she wouldn't stop vomiting on herself. Wow. Some guy complained, I didn't get to see the last 10 minutes of your set uh, because this woman wouldn't stop vomiting. I was like, well, you know. That's a bad act. <laughs> you pick- like, I can't stand this guy's jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, that's a great club. Yeah, it's good. it's a good time, man. Yeah, Lucy, N- Zanies, Nashville, shout out, great time. Oh, where, yeah. where, where were you just? I was in Houston. That's right. Big room. Yeah. Big crowds, big people, big state. Just, uh, I think that's where I got sick, but, you know, you, you get after it every night, and the, the people, they're rowdy, you know, just hooting and hollering. Something about Texas and Florida. You land there, you're like, give me a, a cowboy hat and uh, a, a rail. Like, you just want to, like, party. <laughs> Yeah, I had a guy, I was like, I couldn't tell what kind of hat he was. I was like, what is that? And he goes, it's a Stetson. I was like, I'm supposed to know <laughs> what a Stetson is? I'm from, I'm a Yankee, dude. Right, right. He was so pissed off. Then it turned out he also had an ankle bracelet. So I'm like, maybe you should be more worried about, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had an old joke. It's like, they hate the mask, but they'll wear the cowboy hat. I know. I'm like, it's so silly. The cowboy hat, I don't get it. I know uh, it's a, it's a, what do you call it? Sack religious or hat religious, whatever, but it's. <laughs> It's silly. You're not a, you're not riding a horse. Yeah, didn't wasn't it? Uh, Joe List had the bit about how you're in the you you you're in the cowboy store like, yeah, yeah. and you're just mocking them. They're like, that's like my whole life. That's my thing. Yeah. yeah. And then he had the great tag where he's like, I wonder if they come to New York and put on glasses. And go, I'm a nerd. I have anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> that's a killer joke. Oh yeah, he's pretty good. That that, that Joe uh, List string bean there. Dude, I, this is incredible. This studio, we got the Rick and Morty <laughs> thing. The uh, <laughs> sorry, it's sorry. a great sign. You Same really, thing. this is not a great sign that you're coughing on yourself. He's been COVID tested, folks. Yes. We're not completely reckless, but you're just coughing on yourself. You're <laughs> drinking booze. Yeah, but hey, the show must go on. We got. I wanted to see the studio. I wanted to see you. Uh, I feel <laughs> like, like this is Hamlet. Yes, exactly. We got to push through. It, this I is love, my little skull. I love it. Dude, this is a damn good. If you're going to drink, and a little bourbon's not horrible for a cold, right? 
Good point. Good point. You have one, I think you have one. You're okay. I think you're right. I, I'll have a hot toddy when I'm sick every once in a while. Yeah, cut to me on the Amtrak, just <laughs> you know, yakking. I'm like that girl at your show here. <laughs> but it's a, it's an hour and a half ride. I'm going to Philly. Eight shows. We keep That's adding incredible. shows. That's exciting. That's a great club, Helium. Great, probably my favorite. So you're club. there. T- two shows Sunday. That means two tonight, two Sunday, two Friday, two Saturday. That's incredible. Yeah. I'm there in, I think, September. I'm looking for, I love that club. Love that club, but ah, I wish I wasn't sick. I want to, like, dive in, you know? Yeah, but just, dude, take care of yourself. Like, that's the thing is you got to pace yourself with this shit because, you know, you're on the road every week, so am I. You can't just, like... Yeah, you're right. Cut loose, like... Oh, yeah. man, I saw Nate Bargatze in uh, Nashville. We talked for hours after this show. Oh, it's nice. Like, such a great guy to see. Such a great comic. He's hilarious. Full of wisdom. Yes. You know? He really is. So Don't get into politics with him. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's a brilliant man, that kid. And, boy, he is shot to the moon. Like, he's legit famous comedian. And he did it with his act. He's, he a, great, he's a great comic. Did yeah, it with was, his act. I was in L.A. I, I was on the road for over two weeks. So, wow. Uh, I mean... I did some some hot LA shows, man. Saw you know Anthony Jeselnik, Bill Burr. Burr is like the best. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I don't with the mask and everything. You don't recognize people sometimes. So I literally get off stage, and some guy in a mask, sunglasses, and a hat goes, "Hey, Sammy," uh, and I'm just like, "Oh, hey, yeah." Or maybe, "Hey, Sam," whatever. "Hey, Sam," and I was just like, "Oh, what's up?" And then and they goes, "Oh, okay." Uh, <laughs> I was like, "What?" And then I turned to someone. I was like, "When does Bill Burr get here?" Because I don't want to see his right. set. And he goes, "He goes, I'm here." And I was like, "Oh Jesus, I'm sorry, yeah. man." And no one hates big timing more than Burr. Well, was, it was an honest out. mistake. I just didn't know who it was. I, I thought know. it was someone I didn't know. But he it wasn't know big, that. It wasn't big time. I mean, I'm aware. We, we love the guy, but I'm just saying that's how he probably read it. No, I don't think so. But why would anyone big time him? No, He's he said biggest. I thought we were better than that, but it's all right. Yeah, like, you Jesus see, Christ. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, comics, we need an ovation. When when a comic walks in, you got to blow him a when little. When it's someone you haven't seen in a while. Yeah. And yeah. I, I love seeing him. He's the best. He's you know? the man. He's, He's the best. Probably one of the best uh, cooking. Or ever. Shit, I went cooking, you went ever. Now I got to yeah. go ever. I buried you on that shit, dude. Ah, he's one of the best. He's a legend. Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I'm sick of Mount Rushmore, by the way. Oh Why do God. I have to limit do I, four comics? Four? I thought it was fave five. Now we're good into four? Yeah, and what's up with four star, five star? Which one is it? I don't like the whole favoriting thing. You know, here's the other thing. Remember, like, MySpace back in the day? This is my top oh. ten or whatever. Why are we always ranking people? How bad, about we just are friends? Bad that's, news. That's Leads also to fighting. Like, that's like girl shit. Yeah, it is girl shit. Right, because you have bridesmaids, you know? Right. Guys, there's a best man. There's just one. Uh Uh-huh. And it's like, it's not as competitive. I I don't know. Yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah, that's true. That is, it just leads to I don't even like the best man idea. I don't love best man either, because then your your other friend goes, geez, I thought I was in there. (laughs) It's just all bad, because you're picking and choosing. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like ranking people. But people love ranking. They love the, last the comic standing, top ten list, survivor. Yeah, the top three. Po- I mean, the podium. It's all podium. It's the Olympics. Yeah, bronze. What do you think of that, Biles? Huh? Uh, you know, <coughs> I think here's Sorry. my here's my take on it. If you worked that hard to get there, and you think you got to go. You got to go. Mm, interesting. Like CC Sabathia, one of my favorite baseball players ever, Yankee, alcoholic his whole career. He bailed on the Yankees one year to go to rehab, but it's like for his family, dude. Like I think if you if you were like this is life and death yeah. for me, like all right, what if she wins and then kills herself? Jesus. Like I think mental health is real. I I I believe in that stuff. So, uh you know, I I did tweet uh i'm gonna take a, a step away from my mental health to continue to pursue stand-up but uh <laughs> great you know, tweet I, but i yeah i'm i'm with it i i just heard sabathi on on fresh yeah i mean he was an alcoholic he, oh he would, shit and he was a pitcher so when you're a pitcher you can kind of get away with being an alcoholic because you you throw like once every five days or right something. right so he'd be like i'd pitch i'd party after that night i'd be hung over shit i'd drink the next day and then i'd kind of recover for three days yeah but, but, but like when you but he would go i mean he's 300 pounds it's right. like he would drink a shitload uh, yeah it's like andre the giant they said he had like eight cases four bottles of wine and you know you imagine getting fucked up with andre the giant oh my god that'd be a nightmare you couldn't keep up and then they said he would fart and he had a huge dick it takes yeah. three people to carry him into the uh, fucking <laughs> unless you have hulk hogan he carries right. him to the 
hotel. Imagine that Uber, like, no, no, not, not, no, no, don't come in. <laughs> no English. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, he must be a nightmare to get around that guy. But yeah. uh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, oh, Biles. My thing is, I get it. Look, do what you got to do, protect the health. But like, I don't know. Don't sign up and uh, take someone else could have had that spot. True. So that sucks. But I guess she could. She already have known. got a silver, though, right? I don't know. I don't. I mean, she's up. is she not the best ever? I she think does? she's definitely the best ever. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I I also think like, man, I don't give a like the Olympics just kind of. I don't give a shit either. People I are just all don't riled give up. A shit. It, like it's it's patriotism. I get it. like I care about like Team USA basketball, and we're getting embarrassed, man. Oh like, yeah, it's crazy. It, it's like what? differences in philosophies because Popovich, who's like this genius coach. But then all the players are young, and he's an old guy. And they, I think there's there's a clashing on what you know what they what offenses they think they should run. Oh, what? And yeah. So it's a bummer to see America. I mean, I just you think of America as the dream team, but these other countries have gotten pretty good now. Our players are better, but they just have better chemistry. Interesting, man. I thought we were the king of of b ball. We, we invented it. We, we don't have our best player. Like LeBron isn't playing. James Harden's not playing. Kyrie, AD, like all these great players for us aren't playing. Why wouldn't you want to? I mean, an Olympic medal. I would just be like, all right, we'll go already grab got that. One. Oh, he's got one. And I get it. Like the fucking guy's old. He doesn't want to keep playing. Like, I guess. In the off season too. It's year round. You got to protect. He's in, been injured all year. It just doesn't feel like the Olympics are what they used to be. It used to be like this insane event. Like if you win, you're huge. Yeah. Now I think you get more clout for pulling out. Yeah, you get you get some sponsors. She'll probably get a, a therapy app or something, and uh, she's already got the gold <laughs> therapy app. This is a great business move. Now she's gonna get some uh, some love from you know uh, meditation with Biles. Hey, flip right this way or Hi, whatever. Flip this your is life head around. Space. Yeah, that's a good idea. You got jumping hurdles. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Come on by. We'll get you feeling better or whatever it is. You know, pretty genius. Yeah, and, and, and Kevin look, Spacey can do the Me Too app, so it'll work for everybody. <laughs> yeah, and pull out. I get the pulling out. Yeah. I love pulling out, but <laughs> why do we have to throw her a party? Just pull out. Hey, you're I out. All right. throwing her a party? I, I Those are the other people where like, people are like, you're my hero. It's That's like, what's weird. Okay, well, that to me is also crazy. I, you know, this is, yeah, she's, be your hero for, you know, being a great athlete. But like, look, it's good to say focus on your mental health i think that's good I, I agree I, I do think we use the word hero a little too much oh for sure yeah yeah like He's, michael phelps like when people even call him like a hero it's kind of like if you're a kid it's good that but if, if you're an adult and you're like that's my hero that's fucking weird that's super weird and it just feels like we pick something and we just everybody has to go that way and if you don't if you go the other way you're you're a piece of shit or whatever so i don't I think don't the olympics are good for your mental health i mean no. that, i don't think any of these people are like i am connected to a bunch of other people Right. You were right. literally training all day. Think about the, you know, she's been sexually assaulted. Like, think of the abuse in the gymnastics world, right? Sure. Like, if you're a gymnastics coach, you should have a background check like you're assumed you're in fucking ISIS or something. Agreed. That should be the background check. You want, oh, you want to train teen girls with yeah. tight bodies? We're going to need a minute to go over <laughs> everything you've ever done. Yeah, also, that's true. We got the Task Rabbit backstory. We should have this guy's <laughs> exactly. backstory. There's been a ba you, oh Uber got interviewed. Yes, uh, and they probably haven't, by the way. But uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. So that's another thing. I also think about like Michael Phelps. Everyone talks about like he fucking hated swimming. Like that really? Make, well, that'll make you hate it, right? Like think about the hours you have to train to be that great. Uh huh. You of learn. Course. I think you just start to hate it and you lose your life. And basketball, you can like kind of. You have other people around training you. You have a connection. Swimming, you were just in the pool doing mm. laps. You, I think the mental toughness. Like remember when Diana Nyad swam from Cuba to uh, Florida? It was like sixty-one miles of swimming. She's getting stung by jellyfish the whole time. What? She's sixty-one years old. Well, can't you get a pool? <laughs> I mean, I think she wants. It was like one of the things I want to do this, and you're wow. also like, you know, Cubans have done this. Yes, you know, yes. <laughs> Cubans have done this. That's how they got here, <laughs> right? But yeah, but she was like, I'm gonna do this with like people monitoring me. I think that's pretty amazing. To me, that's one of the most amazing athletic feats, just mentally to totally. keep going. Totally, yeah. And but maybe you have to have that to be an Olympic winner. Oh yeah, you, you know? have to. It's mental toughness too. I mean, you. That, I just think when you're swimming for 61 miles, you didn't check your phone for that whole time. <laughs> that alone true. is impressive. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. No waterproof phone down there. That's a great point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. It's it's crazy. I just don't think people care as much. Like, do you? What do you give this a goog, Sally? What do you get financially if you win a gold? Because I'm sure this country. here. I'm sure there's some. Well, uh, it's about the endorsements. It's not about the winning the gold. I right? think you get a little cash prize though. Oh th- no, no, no. You get money if you win an Oscar too. By the way, nobody talks about that. How much? I think it's like a hundred grand or something. Really? Yeah, which is you know nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, but it's really about like you will continue to work. You would hope. Except, yeah, of course. I think, God, who's the guy in uh, in the Heat of the Night? Who's that actor? Not Sidney Poitier, the the uh, white guy, Rod Steiger. Oh, the the white guy, yeah. yeah. He could not get a job after he won the Oscar for that movie. Is that right? Yeah. What is that? And Sidney Poitier couldn't after either. Neither of them could. What? He didn't win though. Poitier says here, um, Olympics and Paralympic athletes are awarded thirty. 30- 7,500 to gold winners and 22,500 to silver winners. Weird That's number. something. That's something. But then something. they get taxed Well, if Michael Phelps comes back Irish with taxes. eight of those. All right, right. And then you the know? sponsor. Who, who's paying these guys? Well, Comedy the Central? Or were you, I mean, my- <laughs> the Olympic Committee. <laughs> uh, okay. It's just so low. <laughs> uh, um, but sorry. What were you saying? No, I'm just, I mean... Michael Phelps, like Subway, like every ad he did. Oh, you know, like yeah. This dude is worth – Bruce Jenner, that's why he's – she, uh, Caitlyn, Caitlyn Jenner. I'm talking about Bruce right now, so settle yeah. down, people. <laughs> Bruce, when Bruce the was athlete. the Olympic champion, Wheaties boxes. That's where you get that, oh, that net yeah. worth is all the sponsorships. Right, right, right. Yeah, he was huge. I mean, remember Phelps got in trouble for smoking weed. Yeah. That was big. He hit a bong load or something and he lost a Cheerios ad or some cornflakes. All I th- that's all all I saw, which first off, I you know. should be embracing. Of course. Who eats more fucking cornflakes than potheads? Also, this dude's eating probably so much of your shit when he's high, exactly. And then also yeah, Michael good Phelps po- <laughs> good point. Michael he's Phelps that cabinet. is <laughs> he's probably like, I am so burnt out mentally because you have to focus so much. He's like, let me let me turn it off for a second. Of course. What do you do after you fucking take like a big exam in school? You get fucked up. What do you do when you have like a big work presentation? You get drunk or you, you yeah. take an edible or something. You want to shut down. It's the American These way. These are human beings who should be allowed to shut down. And we it's also funny how weed has just the perception has changed so much. I know, and they got fucked back in the day, but it's all changed. They should get they should get reimbursed. Oh man, you watch a movie from the forties, they're like, We locked him up real good. He was smoking reefer. Yeah, yeah. He had a jazz cigarette. <laughs> that fucking criminal. Like, no, now <laughs> it's like a cigarette. healthy thing. Now doctors are like, Hey, you got glaucoma, have some uh Maui Wowie or whatever the fuck, you know. Oh man, have you been to one of those distilleries? No. Oh, the weed place. The weed place. Yeah. They what are they called? Dispensary. Dispensary. Yeah. It's insane. It's crazy. They have like crackers out. I know. It's wild. And I'm not a good weed guy. I hate so it. people are like, try this, try that. I'm like, if I eat this, I'll be cuddling the cat in this corner right now. You're, I'll be ruined. You're pushing feelings away, and weed makes you in your head. And oh. I'm the same way. I mean, yeah, that's why nightmare. I probably bonded over alcohol is because huh. you shut down. Here, here. Well, you got to shut down every now. Give me, give me the Oscar money, please. Also, I feel bad you're just sitting there. I want to put you to work a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you all right, man? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Helps to loosen the uh, mucus. Can I get another one of these, or is that is that horrific? That's up to you, bud. All right. Can we go l- maybe a little less sweet? No problem. I'm sweet enough, as they say. All right. Thank you, Dan. Absolutely. I'm your board center, not your doctor, so I got you, man. Wow. <laughs> well, they were considered doctors back in the day. Yeah, it's like, you know, you got ghosts in your blood. Do some cocaine right, about it. You know? Right. They called it elixir or, you know, some shit. They, uh, yeah, that's, dude, I uh, I got to give you a wreck. I got a couple. Oh, good, please, I yeah. I got a couple good wrecks. First off, this is a Salacuse wreck to me that I finally watched. So I got to shout out Salacuse for giving me this wreck. The taking of Pelham One Two Three oh, from classic, the '70s, classic. the one with Walter Matthau and uh, Robert Shaw. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, yeah. it's incredible. Jerry so, Stiller's in it. Wow. Oh, thank you. I'll, yeah. yeah, I'll take one more too. What the Just hell? the New York scenes alone. I mean, so badass, so gritty. '70s baby. One of the best New York movies of all time. Uh, probably, yeah. I can't believe I've never seen it. It's one of those movies where, so basically, a subway car gets taken hostage. Yeah, and. 
Walter Matthau is, you know, kind of the MTA guy who's in charge. He's like, he's like a, he's like a transit police, which I, I didn't even know existed. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I did, like, of course they exist, but I didn't put it together. Yeah. And, uh, Jerry Stiller. What I love about these guys is literally every person who is informed about the hostage situation on the train is annoyed. It's the most New uh, York. Perfect. Literally, literally every character is like, there's been a train overtaken. They're like, ah, oh, this is exactly what I need today. That's my route. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. That's how it should be. It's the best. So good. So good. And when you watch it with this guy, he gets all misty because it brings him back to his youth because he's 68 years old. But he yeah. gives great movie wrecks, this guy. Oh, Oh, yeah, he gets it. He knows what's up. Uh, shit, I gotta give you a wreck. Oh, my wreck's not as good as that. I got another one, too. Please. So you, go, you go first. Well, then. I was just gonna say, uh, I hope uh, nobody's done this, but or I hope I haven't done this already, but I think I might have done this. Oh, Did it's I... streaming on Amazon, by the way, if you want to watch it. For, oh, there you go. You have Amazon. Uh, keep Airborne in the house. You got Airborne? I, I don't believe in it. Really? There was an article a while back just calling it a crock. I mean, if it's zinc, then I, I get, I, I think it's a placebo. I don't Oh, buy no. It. Well, I am, I feel bad. I'm the sick guy pushing airborne. So maybe it is worthless. Are we, uh, yeah. I mean, I think. Is that a crock, Sally? I don't know. Look it up. I think it's bullshit. Shit, I just spent 80 bucks. Because I used to swear by it, but I, I, I just do zinc. I do like coldies are good for me. Maybe I'll do zinc. Coldies are my, my go-to when I'm, I take them even when I'm not sick. If I just feel like allergies or anything coming on, I pop a coldies. But man. then do you worry that, you know, oh, you, your body will need it? No. All right. Airborne agrees to pay $23.3 million to settle a lawsuit. Because they made false claims about curing uh, I got stacks of it in my apartment. I remember seeing an article and they were like, this Thank is, because I used to take it all the time and be like, this is working. But like, you just want to believe it's a cure, I think. I know, I, I know. I do at least. Oh, what a shame. Cherries are phenomenal. But starter cherries, some of the best. Oh, yeah. Wait, Oscars? Didn't say. Ah, interesting. They did say that uh, men's next movie, they get a raise of $4.3 million and women get a raise of 500000 Shut That's up. That's fucking horrible. <laughs> I know. What? Well, you know the story of Lupita, Lupita Nyong'o from uh, 12 Years a Slave. Way she to got, nail that name. That was a risk. I got it. <laughs> you got it. That was <laughs> She's scary. great. She's a great actress. But she got $13,000 for 12 Years a Slave. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I don't know. That's and that. I think she won That's the like Oscar a- or she got nominated. Wow. So does, she's a great actress. A she's beautiful. She uh There's she, a name for those wages, by the way. For those wages? Yeah. <laughs> Slave wages. Oh Do you not see where he's going? That's a great joke. I was it's thinking the women up. angle. That's great. Well done. <laughs> well, it's really, you know, Twelve Years a Slave is a brutal movie. Mm-hmm. I couldn't watch it. I used to have a bit it. about how I, I saw it in one of those theaters with reclining chairs. You're like, this ain't the way to see it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see this in a, in a luxurious setting. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I remember I went to the cellar after I saw that movie because I was like, shit, you know, like, oh, my God, what a brutal film. And uh, I walk in. And I tell, I said, Keith Robinson. And I was like, have you seen it? I was like, oh, it's a, it's a terrific film. And he's like, shut the fuck up. Uh, he's like, you're not allowed to say that as a white guy. I'm like, I'm sorry. What? It's a good movie. I know, but he's like, you said it too, too joyously. Oh, I was like, all right, right, it's right. fair enough. I loved it. I, Wonderful I film. Off. Yeah, it was, it was a- great. <laughs> That's funny. Keith is so fun. Keith Check out Keith Robinson. The best. Funniest guy. Hey, hey, folks. We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by good old honey. Yes. You know you do the online shopping. We're all hunting for coupon codes and uh, saving money codes and whatever the hell you got to type into that search box we've all been there but we don't know the code now how, how you gonna get a deal without the code you gotta be in some vip club or private room not anymore we all shop online and we've all seen that empty promo code f- just taunting us well thanks to honey you don't have to search for one anymore honey is free and the browser extension that scours the internet for discount codes. When you're ready to check out, Honey automatically applies the best one. Instant savings! Honey has found its customers over $2 billion bucks in savings, supported by over 30,000 stores online. Buy anything you want from tech, gaming, beer, wine. You know we love that. It's a great idea. You can just get a free code to save you some dough. Why wouldn't you do it? Get on it. Screw clipping coupons. 
I uh, I just bought some shoes. I used honey. Found a nice uh, promo. Cut me uh, cut me down quite a bit. So you should do it too. If you don't already have honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free. Installs in just a few seconds. Save some dough and support this pod. Get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash drunk. That's joinhoney.com slash drunk. And get that honey, baby. All right, let me give you a... Let me give, you a, give uh, me another rack. Oh, I got a peeve for you here. Hit me up with a peeve. All right. Okay, this has always bugged me, and I've always known it bugged me, but I could never think of it, and then it happened to me, and I wrote that shit down instantly. When someone offers you something, like... Hey, you want a you know you want a piece of bread or you want some cookies I made and you say no and they get pissed. You know what I mean? You're at somebody's yeah, house. They go, "I made muffins. You want a muffin?" You're like, oh, "I'm good." And they're like, "Geez, you don't want the muffin?" I'm like, "So I got to eat the muffin now? Because you want me to eat the muffin? Why are yeah. you hurt? You offered it." I think those people are like, they feel good that you ate something that feels good for you. But what feels good for you is actually. Not eating not the muffin eating right the now. Muffin. So they should they should hear you. Yes. Wow, that was like a therapist answer. <laughs> that was <laughs> really good. Wow. Wow. Man, I should ch- you should charge me. <laughs> um, it's yeah, true. and it drives me nuts. People do do that, and like, it's tough. Especially people bring food to show. Sometimes I'm sure you get this. Sometimes. Oh yeah. It's like one thing to take food from a stranger. I'm like, I don't know what kind of practical joking lunatic is like bringing brownies that they laced with something. I know. I eat every one of them. Really? I can't not eat it. If somebody brings me a box of too. cookies, I'm going to eat them all. Yeah, I'll take it. But yeah, I just hate when people offer because now you feel like, all right, I guess I have to take it because I don't want to hurt this person's feelings, even though I don't want a turkey leg at the moment. You know, (laughs) turkey leg's a tough one. It's a bit muffins a little, you know, and the booze is the biggest one. Hey, you want a drink? Nah, man, I'm all right. I got hung over. I'm hung over. I've never seen you turn down a drink in my life. That was a bad example. (laughs) But uh, I just uh, I hate when they get upset when you. Like you offered, I don't want it, and now you're mad at me. I think some of those people don't want to drink alone too. It's that's the other thing. Uh, like if yeah. they're drinking, they're like, "Yeah, have a drink with me," and you're like, "Yeah, I'm, you know, I get to wake up early," and you're yeah. just like, "Come on, have one drink. Do you have one drink?" And then at a certain true. point, you're like, "All right, at a certain point, this is, uh, you know, it's a bit much. It's a lot." But that's that's a if you offer, don't offer it if it's if it's an empty gesture. You know, you just want me to have it. Yeah, I, I don't know if your feelings are on the line, don't offer it. Yeah, you can't get it. You can't get too emotionally attached to the offer. Yes, that's, that's what it really is. Exactly. Because the muffin a lot of things too. You don't I want. love a muffin, but I mean, I love a muffin. I'm the muffin man, <laughs> but uh, I got a muffin top. But I'm just saying, if I don't want the muffin, it's not a, a personal attack. This is another one I get a lot. I got a new phone, and I go, "New phone? Who is this? Whoa! Oh, you deleted me, huh?" I'm like, "It's a new phone." Yeah. Also, maybe I didn't save your number. Or like, that. I, I'll do a thing now where sometimes it pops up on your phone, the name, so you just don't save it. Maybe. It says the name. John so Wilson. Like, so you forget to say it. But then, like, then they text you in, like, two months. Right. And there's none of that. Right. Good and they're point. like, oh, you you don't know. And it's just like, look, man. It's not personal. It's not personal. I'm a fucking mess. Yes, yeah, exactly. I'm the mess. Yeah. Not you. You're the egomaniac loser. I'm a mess. Right, right. Fitz Dog used to have a great bit about, like, you don't remember me? Like when he meets a guy, he's like, ah, and he's like, what a dick. I'm like, how about be more memorable? You yeah. Know? Like, I don't, this is my fault. You're yeah. boring. I'm ruining the bit, but it was a <laughs> no, great point. No, but it's point. a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, make a splash, will you? All right. Well, give me a peeve. <laughs> Let me give you one more rec first. Oh, okay. So I just read this book called uh, uh, The Big Goodbye. Mm. It's incredible. It's about old Hollywood. If you like movies, you will love this shit. It's oh uh, great! It's like Chinatown, uh, Roman Polanski. It's about Roman Polanski and the Sharon Tate murder, which is like brutal. Mm. But then it's about it's a lot about Jack Nicholson, who's just Ooh. the fucking man. He's the man. As if I didn't love Jack Nicholson already enough, like it just made me love him ten times more because it yeah. turns out he's like the most loyal dude on the planet. Robert Town was like oh yeah. crazy guy. I mean, you know, Godfather. it's cool to see that. It's cool that there's still yeah he, he punched up Godfather. Oh, okay, okay. He wrote Chinatown. He punched up Godfather. He like, uh, he was like the script doctor. Punch up Bonnie and Clyde. Whoa. He like say they were like he saved every big Hollywood script and he was a genius. But he burnt himself out on coke. He would take coke like a, the way we take like an Adderall. Whoa. Be like, be like, oh. But then he would also get he would drink like vodka to level right, out. So right. it's like, but uh, yeah, he was. Uh, 
Ben Affleck to direct. Whoa, wow, that could be, dude. I, I gotta say, Affleck's a great director. Yeah. Is like, he? I mean, wow. The Town is incredible. Oh, he did The Town. He started and directed The Town. And, wow, and, and Argo, and uh, the one with Morgan Freeman and Casey Affleck. Oh, uh, Manchester <coughs> by the Sea. No, no, no. Uh, it's a noir. Oh, look it up. It's it, Casey Affleck, Morgan Freeman, Ed Harris, John Ashton. Mm. Man, I'm good with actors' names. Yeah, not good with titles. But, uh, how about? Oh, dude, some of the stories in this, like, oh, it's a lot about Robert Evans. Oh, I love Robert. Robert Evans, Evans is like the ultimate hilarious, Hollywood over the top, character. cliche Hollywood character. It's it, he's the producer with the feet on the desk and the cigar, and he even talks that way. You know, he's like, dude, I told that Hebrew to get off my lawn. You know, <laughs> like he's so old school. He's that's how he, he called Nicholson Irish. He called yes, he yeah, called, that Mick. He, he called uh, town the scribe. And he uh, called, and he called Roman Polanski the Polak. I yes. mean, he just called everyone. He goes, I got the three best in town. You right. tell me I'm not going to get it. And of course he was like terrified. He's like, Chinatown's fucked. The score was <laughs> fucked, but he would bullshit. The best, one of the best scenes is like, this would be hilarious in a scene is he would always fight with like the agents to get the rates lower for the actors. Yeah. So he's arguing with Faye Dunaway's because Nicholson's just calling Faye Dunaway. who's on some set in Europe every night, like, Faye, we need you. <laughs> we need you for this mo- We need you for this part. We need you for Chinatown. You are this character. Yeah. You'll nail it like any... So, like, Faye Dunaway was the biggest diva, but Nicholson just knew who was great. So so she loved him, but right. she hated everyone else, of course. And everyone said hated her, and he's calling her every night, Faye, we need you. And, <laughs> and then Robert Evans is talking to her agent, and he's like, I can... 50 grand is the most I give her. And she's like, she'll fire me for that, mu- for that offer. And and she'll be right. That's too low an offer for Faye Dunaway. And and he's like, Jane Fonda wants to part. I, this is how we get Faye Dunaway. That's smart. And, and, then, and he's just like, oh, God damn, I'll, I'll see what I can do, you yeah. piece of shit. And they're, and they're yelling at each other, always in negotiations, but they were still kind of friends. Yeah. The next day, she calls back. You I won't believe this, but Faye agreed to it. He goes, I'll see what I can do. Jane Fonda really wants it still. Ah, he calls back and he's like, all right, right you, 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 Dunaway's in. Yeah. And she's like, all right, agree, handshake, whatever. And then he pauses. He's like, I'll level with you. Fonda pass. Ah, <laughs> and then, and she pauses and she goes, I'll level with you too. There was no Elia Kazam project, which she was kind of building up Whoa, that why she couldn't do it. So it's like, oh, I love it. It's like one of the things where you're like, oh man, it's funny that they they're both full of shit. Yes, but they both admit they're full of shit. It's a chess game. It's, it's who's the game. better schmoozer, who's the better liar. I love that shit. There's so many great scenes. There's scenes like Nicholson won't come to set on Chinatown because there's a Lakers game going into double overtime, <laughs> and he's like, I'm not coming out of the trailer. It's like. Ja- Jack, come on. He's like, he's like, fuck you. Like, Polanski takes forever. I just want to watch this one part of the game. And, wow. And then they lose. He'll be in a furious mood. It's like scenes of like Nicholson's, how, how tight he was with John Houston. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's also banging his daughter Whoa. on the set of Chinatown. And John Houston's this like sophisticated older guy who's like, I see you're sleeping with my daughter, you know? <laughs> and then on top of it, he is banging the daughter in Chinatown because yeah. oh, Faye Dunaway. Right. So he's like, Wow, life imitates it's crazy. Fart. What about uh, have you ever seen Chinatown? See oh, it? love it, uh, big fan. But fun two things about Nicholson: one, huge dong. Yeah, yeah. I saw a porn star on Howard Stern when I was like thirteen, and she was like, "I fuck Jack Nicholson. He's huge in the pants." And Howard was like, "Get out of here!" You know, because he's got a tiny. <laughs> Nicholson dick. won't do interviews. Oh, is that right? I mean, when do you ever sense. see him get interviewed? Good point. I mean, he's got mystique. Well, he also thinks like if you see an artist get interviewed, how are you supposed to believe them as all these characters? I love it. I love it. He's a guy I'm like, I'm worried they would try to cancel him or something, but he's so uh, he's so beloved. It sounds and- like he's not that bad a dude, although the Polanski thing did happen in his ski house. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that comes up on the, the picture there, Peters. Is that his dick? Oh, he's a fake black dick, obviously. That's hilarious. Oh, I couldn't see it. That's <laughs> Dude, uh, so... Oh, and then the other thing, I watched some documentary on a photographer. I forgot his name, Sally, but they he's like, he filmed or he photoed all these huge celebrities in the 70s, and he's like, I did the Nicholson one. He showed up in a Porsche. We shot it on the side of the road. He was super fun and jovial, and then he zooms into the photo, and his nose is all white. Oh yeah, it's just so much blow. They were all that was Hollywood in like the early seventies. Think about all the great movies though from the early seventies and late sixties Hollywood. That's oh like, yeah, that, that was the golden age. And then best years. Another great well, last thing I'll, I won't keep blabbing on about this. But one thing that like to me was like amazing is, uh, I mean, the most horrible thing ever: the Manson murders, Polanski, uh, Sharon Tate, pregnant, yep. murdered. All those people get murdered in the house, and he was obviously scarred, and then. 
they basically the orig- the original ending for Chinatown. Spoiler, obviously, if you haven't seen it, like zone out for fifteen seconds. Mm. You know, Faye Dunaway murdered, and that wasn't the original ending. Polanski yeah. made that be the ending, huh. and, and they basically said there was no way he wasn't going to come back from Europe and go to L.A. and not have a beautiful blonde be murdered in the end, because that was how he saw L.A. Whoa, isn't that fucking heavy? Heavy, damn, that's heavier than the uh, hot tub rape. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was <laughs> that chapter was rough. To oh, really? Well, that's yeah, in there? yeah. I mean, he Ooh. basically had a fifteen-year-old. It, it ain't good. Jeez. He le- and he never came and Nich- Nicholson wasn't there. He was gone. It seemed like he was but he also wouldn't turn his back. He wouldn't turn his back on any friends, Nicholson. Damn. He just wouldn't do it. Did he do any Polanski movies after that? I don't think so. Although he, they almost did. Mm. They mm. almost did, I think, and I think it fell apart cuz Nicholson wanted too much money, I mm. think. Yeah, he's uh he's expensive. Dude, I mean the deal he got for Batman is like the greatest greatest deal, deal ever cuz he didn't did he get it back end or something. He got like 4% of every Batman movie, I think. Oh, yeah. my God. It's the it only way he would agree to it. It was something insane. Of every the, future Batman yeah, movie? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. It was something insane. He's made like 60 to 80 million off, off yeah. that role. Such a, I love that movie. I mean, 1989, it was like I was, you know, seven years old or whatever. But it was just so silly. He's got this purple suit, the big gun. He's dancing to Prince. You know, he's so great. You don't rub up another man's rhubarb. Like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about, but he just made it so Nicholson. And Keaton was great, too. And Keaton's the man. Hot Kim Basinger, too. Oh, boy. Those were good years. Yeah. I feel bad. We talk about movies all day long. My my girlfriend was like, uh, or fiance, what a weird <laughs> thing to say. I hate that word. But uh, she was like, God, Boys love movies. Men love movies. I'm like, yeah, I thought great. everybody loved movies. What is like? I will cream. say this though. Think about all the great movies from like the 60s, 70s. A lot of them are male leads. Most of them are male ah. leads. So I do think guys like just the last ah. like 20 years. I feel like women have gotten more complex roles in movies. Mm. Maybe that'll get more into movies. Maybe more women into it. And they do say men are more visual. Ah. So maybe it appeals to us in a different way. Because she'll watch this 90 Day Fiance shit. I'm like, I don't know how you do this. This is like bad well, that's, for that, me. that drives me crazy. I just I just showed my girlfriend uh, One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. We watched that, and she was like, that was a great movie. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, all right. But she felt for Nurse Ratchet in a way I did not. Interesting. I fucking hated Nurse Ratchet. Well, we all did. I was a kid. How do you feel for Nurse Ratchet? What do you Because she's dealing with she's dealing with crazy people all day, and she's like, and Nicholson's not even crazy. Like he's there because he's Trolling. kind of an asshole. Yeah. yeah. Ah, interesting. And I was like, that's a that's an interesting take. Although she also was needlessly mean, in my opinion. She's, I agree. She was a cunt. I mean, yeah. when I was watching that as a kid, I related as the as she was the teacher being so Dude, mean. That's so fucking. Fu- I said the same thing to her. That, that's why I was bad. All right, our period. I was like synced. Nichols, Nicholson. <laughs> Nicholson was like the bad kid in class. Yes, but he was killing, and he was kill, and he was likable, and you had he was charming. You had to love him. Dude, the scene, I got teary-eyed in the scene. You know the scene where he gets the votes to watch the baseball game? Yeah, The yeah. World Series? And oh, she goes, great. sorry, the baseball game. Even though he gets the votes to watch the World Brutal. Series. Brutal. And she won't let him. And then he just starts narrating the game as if it's on. And everyone yep. gathers around I'm like, fuck, that, that got was, me. That was a special scene. Beautiful Brilliant. scene. Brilliant. Milos Foreman. Directed. Genius, yeah. Yeah. He also did Man on the Moon. Damn, I never saw that. Eh, it's okay. I mean, Jim yeah. Carrey's amazing in it, but... Yeah. As a movie, yeah. Ah, I shouldn't say that. It's pretty good. I got to give you a peeve. Now, give me right? a peeve. I feel like we've gone in the fucking full Siskel here. I'm sorry, dude. I, we both love movies. Oh, I know. I'm going to peeve. I got a couple. Oh, boy. Two, this is a small one. I'll do a, one on myself. I like peeving my my own things that I do that annoy me. Oh, I love when you do a, a you fall on your own sword. First off, this is one. On the road. You ever do it in a hotel? Are any of these, uh, are any of these do not disturb signs? Did the end of them not fall off the second you open the door? Ah, yes. Can we get one that sticks to the fucking door? That's true. This feels like a man of Scalco bit. <laughs> these things that fall off the door every time I'm in a hotel. What's going on with these I'm, stickers? Yeah, like, you're right, though. <laughs> you open the door and they fly in like a feather <laughs> every time, but now they're, they've get, they've gotten rid of them. They don't do the cleaning with the COVID. They're still there, though. Oh, okay. I also am just terrified that I'm going to fly all day, do a show at night, then get woken up at 8 p.m. Oh, been there. 
and they don't take no for an answer. You're like, I'm good, I'm good. Well, I think they, that's how they get paid. Is that right? I think it's by room, isn't it? What? No, give that a go. I mean, doesn't that make sense? I always assumed it was like a like a flight attendant. Well, then why it, do they want to clean it so badly? I think they're just they can't hear you. I don't know. Yeah, they finish earlier. Ah, uh, that's interesting. I think it's by room they get paid. By room? That's not fair, because what if you just have a shift where everybody's sleeping in? I don't know. Is it like a waitress where you want the good shift? I don't know. I thought it was like a flight attendant. You know, if you're sleeping, I don't have to serve you. You know, so you get a break. What do you think there, Sally? I'm looking it up. Okay, let me give you another peep. All right. I'm looking this up. This one's on me. I did this. So I was in Nashville. Yeah. Sorry, flat rate per room. There we go. What? Per room. Per room. I told you. Wow. Well, I'll let them in now. I just feel bad. There's so much semen on those. Oh my on that. God. I'll jizz right on the carpet sometimes. You, you're going to need a flashlight, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, uh, yeah. Are you so, a towel guy? A t- do I jerk off? Do I come on a towel? Yeah, in the hotel. Oh, no, what am I, a monster? <laughs> they have to clean those oh. things. Well, where do you shoot it? You think I want them to pick it up and for it to break like a cracker? No. I. Uh, oh, shit. I thought everybody did that. I go green. This is going to sound crazy. I jerk off into my palm and I and I dump it in the sink. All right. I got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> is that weird? I've never heard anyone say that my entire okay, life. Here's my defense. Because sometimes I used to do it back in the pillow. Some of those tissues are bad. Uh, not pillow. Tissues. Pillow, that'd be crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I do in the tissue. <laughs> That's a lot of jizz. It fills up a pillowcase. <laughs> Wait, so you the tissues is not great because it it's all over the place. You can't really aim it. I feel. Well, my issue with the tissues too is sometimes you put it on your penis and some some of it gets stuck to the hole. Yeah, good. So point. I just started doing the hand. I'm not. I can't come on the towels. That's a that's a cruel move i thought i was doing the right thing i think you're doing the wrong thing wow yeah when i leave those towels look like i have no opinion i will tell you this is the (laughs) shitty thing i have done i don't do it as much but i used to only trim my pubes on the road Uh, i don't like the cleanup at home that makes sense i tip extra that makes sense i think if you do it over the toilet or in the shower i do it i i i i tip extra in the room but i also yeah i'll do uh you don't want to hit that on the bedspread Oh, I wouldn't trim my pubes over the bed. I do it over the ah, toilet. You can lay down, get the legs up. I don't know. Well, you're coming in your own hand. I don't know what else is going well, on. That's, that well, then I wash my hands. I've been you shaking your hands for 20 years. This is weird. Well, I wash them. Uh, I'm just worried you're going to mix the Purell and the jizz one day. Like, <laughs> all right, I got my sanitizer. <laughs> Muscle memory. <laughs> Holy hell. I don't jerk off with Purell. Uh, no, no, that no, would be burns too that much. Would burn. But so does the loneliness, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least your dick's clean. <laughs> Man, jerk off in the hand. I don't know. My jizz is is very uh, temperamental. It's sporadic. Is it? Yeah, it shoots at one of them. Then like one woman. drips. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I like how you're trying to pull a green thing. You know, I go green. What are you kidding? I just the don't jizz on your like hand. Uh, the options are tissue, towel, floor. Floor is ridiculous. Drapes. <laughs> the, the floor. I like to open the Bible and jizz in it and then close it. That's what I do. <laughs> right on Luke. <laughs> this yeah. one, that one's going to get us uh, demonetized on YouTube, I think. <laughs> yeah. The Bible's still in there. I check every sometimes, time. Sometimes if it's one of those... Uh, Shampoo, conditioner, lotion thing yeah. in the shower. I dump a little in the conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> Just to mix it up. <laughs> Just, you know, they won't know the difference. Yeah, that guy's got a decent piece on the left. What about... <laughs> oh, you found... Oh, you don't want that on your search history. Bible jizz? <laughs> Man, you're going to get uh, flagged. <laughs> God hates flags. It's not like there aren't any in the church, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> there's a kneeler for a reason, folks. <laughs> How weird is that for you with the, as a Jewish guy with the confession box and the pedophilia? Isn't that kooky? Why is that kooky for me? Well, as an, I, I went to Catholic school, yeah. so I've kind of like seen it all front and center. You know, uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, Jews don't do confession. We just kvetch. Ah, we that's just complain true. all the time. We've that's turned true. complaining into an art form. Like people, it's funny. Jews will complain. This is it's not just Jews. This is, a lot of New Yorkers do this too. A lot of New Yorkers have taken on the persona of Jews. Like Seinfeld is very New York-y right. Jew humor, even if he's Costanza. Let's be real. He's a Jew. Yeah, you know? gotcha. Uh, but you know, you complain and it's amazing how you just see a friend you haven't seen forever and you're just like, 
And then this happened. And then I go to the store and there's a line. Yeah. And then I go to the ATM and there's a line. And then I get cut off in traffic. And then you're like, all right, good talk. That's all it is. Uh, like, you're not, you don't feel drained because that's just like how they're. Interesting. It feels less like draining. You're venting. Like, you're venting. Yeah. That, venting sounds better than complaining. Yeah. You that's good. It. Yeah, that's good. Speaking of kvetching, we got a Jackie Mason died. So that's a big, big Jewish comedian. If you haven't heard him on uh, Fresh Air with Terry Gross, NPR interview, very, very good interview. I've never heard that. Worth listening to. His, his real name is like Yaakov Amada or some crazy Jewish name. He was a rabbi. Yeah. Back in the day. Did you ever hear him as the Aardvark? No. In those cartoons from like the 70s? I know he was in The Simpsons. Yeah. Crusty okay. Dead. Well, oh, that's a great episode. Great app. Ep. Great app. <sighs> Google Simpsons that if you haven't Simpsons. seen it. Give me his real name. It's coming some crazy. I think he's Russian or Hungarian. Hideous, hideous man. But uh I mean he was the Jewish comic. Like that was his thing. There it is. Moisha. Yakov Moisha. Oh my god. Wow. That's the most Jewish name I've ever heard. It's crazy. Yakov. Russian Jew. Total Russian Jew, right? There you go. I used to see him, this is not even that long ago, within the last five years, jogging on Shut Sixth up. Avenue with a backpack in like full on clothes. What? In the in the bike lane, not like what? I know he was jogging, jogging like a slow jog. Whoa! Yeah. So he was eighty eight. He just must have been in his eighties, yeah. And he's jogging still. I mean, it's not a fast jog, but it's moving quicker than walking in the bike lane. Backpack. Good for him. Eighty eight, yeah. still jogging. How about that? Good for him. I'll tell you. How old was he when he uh, kicked 93. it? Ninety three. Ninety three. Isn't that right? That's what it says. That's here. pretty good. He did pretty well. I never have heard one album. Yeah, I don't really know his stuff. Wow, he's from Sheboygan. Nobody saw that coming. I just figured Manhattan or Brooklyn. Sheboygan, great word. It's a funny, it's a good comedy word. Great like comedy Cucamonga. word. Cucamonga. Yeah, yeah, or Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, oof. Sorry. Right? I'm good. Eight I'm shows this weekend. We're going to push through, folks. Yeah, I'm a little worried. Uh, I'll be fine. And we got a taping next week. All great timing. It's exciting, man. What? Uh, so, do you want to plug the tape in? Sure. I mean, uh, it's. I think you got to go to theblacklist.com or one of those for tickets, but there are tickets. I'd love to have some drunk fans there. Just come out and support. We need that laugh uh, on Netflix. I could bomb. I'm going pretty dark because yeah. I really want this thing to stand out a little bit. So, uh, it's abortion. It's trans. It's anal. It's queefs. It's black. It's white. It's day. It's... <laughs> night thank you so uh, yeah we're going I'm excited, all in man i'm excited to see this edison ballroom in midtown old supper club nice yeah it looks you, pretty have you good seen the setup i i googled the room and it's pretty beautiful old school ornate and nice. it's tighter you know the old episodes they were like in a giant fucking ceiling with a big warehouse with hot models models aren't good audience Ugh. la suck it L.A. ain't great. No. <laughs> no. But no. there's some parts of L.A. that are cool. Sure, sure. It's got I mean, moments. the shows I did in L.A., the Supernova shows were pretty fun. Killer. Yeah. Killer shows. And oh, man. I'm at the cellar the other night, and I get on stage. I've been on the road for two and a half weeks. First step back, go on stage to the Comedy Cellar, and I can't get on without people yelling out, we might be drunk. Come on. How great is that? Yeah. Or he was just an alcoholic. My, my. <laughs> I was walking down 7th Avenue the other day, and this guy goes, wait, 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 wait. And I thought he was mad at me. And he takes his phone out, and it's he's playing that the pod to me too. on the phone. Crazy. I love it. We appreciate it, folks. God bless Tell America. Tell your friends. And remember to email us for the Patreon at yes. WeMightBeDrunkPod at gmail.com. And subscribe to that Patreon. Hell yeah. Patreon.com slash WeMightBeDrunk. I want to make sure you, we're not fucking you on time, Mark. Because I know you got to train oh, Okay, to okay. Well, then give me a bit. A bit? All right. I, most of my new shit is either hitting or just garbage. So here's an idea I had that I can't get to hit. I want to make sure no one's done this. Mm. So it's about, you know, the Cleveland Indians are now the Guardians. Mm. You know, and people are pissed off. People are like, you know, I see people online like, this is bullshit. You know, this is like, there, there are people who react to this the same way they react to like when they find out someone's trans. Right, right. Where they're just like, oh, that's your fucking, that's your name? Really? Ah, I don't believe good. that. Oh, are you going to change your uniform? <laughs> yeah, the name's good. That's yeah. a great angle. And the clothes. The you clothes. Change clothes. You're just changing clothes? Like, that's nothing? Right. And I have people who are like, well, I'm only going to address you as the Indians. 
Yeah, it's like calling him Bruce still. Yeah, it is. That's good. That's good. But then we're, yeah, it's like, I don't know. There's something to it, I think. Guardians yeah. is so weird. Guardians is not a great name. The like, logo is pretty cool. Though. That G with the ball is pretty cool. I like the G with the ball, but uh, I wonder why they chose that. Is that significant to Cleveland? A guardian? I mean, I think the, of like the Indians is significant to Cleveland. It ain't for a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to hear what the, the Native Americans think. Are they fans? Well, that'd be no, funny. If clearly so. not. They, I think they've been pushing it. Oh, really? Yeah, I thought it was pushing honkies it. pushing it. I don't know. I do think this is a good sign. I, think, I mean, look at the Cleveland Indians, though. The red face logo. That ain't a good logo. Is that Wahoo? Yeah. Chief Wahoo. Yeah. Look at that logo and tell me if that was any other race if that were fly that were flying. True. I mean, it's like it's like you got to admit it's a cool looking guy. But yeah. Well, what about you know, the Irish guy? The Notre Dame dude ain't ain't too hot looking either. By the way, it's a good point. Uh -huh. I'm, with, I'm with you. Irish. Yeah. Nobody cares about their feelings. I, look at that no guy. Nobody cares about the that, Irish. That guy's I, a piece of shit. But pull oh. up. Pull up Chief Wahoo, though. That guy's at a bar, that fist dude, fighting. But no one cares about racism against white dudes. I guess so, yeah. That is, oh, that's fucking bad, Oh, that's dude. bad. That's the logo. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, well, the brown one is think if that was wild. a black. Think if that was a black dude or an Asian dude. Yeah, that'd be like minstrelly. Think if it was a Jew. Yeah, it could pass. <laughs> but that's yeah. I, I had a guy heckle me at the show. I just brought it up, and he goes... He goes, Charlie Sheen didn't wear no Guardians jersey. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's Charlie Sheen's first regret. All right. <laughs> He's, He's got HIV AIDS. positive. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I got to keep that in somehow. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I will say, maybe this is a horrible take. I think the fact that we're down to sports mascots is a good sign. We, we, we don't have any bigger fish to fry. In a way. I agree. I do That's kind of nice. It's interesting. I was looking up uh, other teams back in the day. It's funny. It's like Indians is definitely, it's just a bad one. It's like you, Jim Jeffries has the best bit on this where he's like, you can't, you can't name, <laughs> I'm trying to do the Australian accent. <laughs> you can't name a team after a genocide. Oh. And he's like, and if you think I'm wrong, think about how you'd feel about a soccer team named the Munich Jews. <laughs> right, right. That's Which I think great. is pretty fair. Munich is what, what makes that so smart. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah, he's pretty good, that Jeffries. He's a funny guy. Yeah, what were you going to say, Sally? I saw you. Oh, yeah. This guy Reagan. also, his character from the Cleveland Indians, used to also go by the name Chief Nakahoma. Mm. As in Nakahoma. Nakahoma. Oh, Nakahoma. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. I, and believe me, like I'm not for, I'm like, I'm not a guy who's like into political correctness at all, but that logo is not good. <laughs> That's a crazy logo. Yeah. I will say, uh, oh, shit, I forgot my point. This, uh, Sweet and sour. What's it called? <laughs> Whiskey sour is, uh, is. It's a really good drink. Very good. I, I got. A, I got a fat buzz on. I got to work tonight too. I'm. I'm in the uh, brokerage. So. Oh shit! All right, yeah. you got a little time I'll to tell you. to eat this away. But uh, uh, I can't remember. Damn. I do. I think Guardian sucks. But yeah. What are you gonna I do? Don't, I think all team names take a minute. I do, I do Maybe, think, yeah. like, I think they're new, so you're like, ugh. But I, I've never, like, heard a new name where I've been like, that's, like, when the when the Sonics, I think the Sonics were such a cool name. Mm. When the Seattle Sonics yeah. they moved and became the Oklahoma Thunder, and I was like, eh. that's lame. But then I'm like, no, I mean, the Thunder's kind of fun now. Yeah, well, what the fuck's a Denver Nugget? I know it's a gold nugget, but Nugget just sounds rough to me. But the logo, the, the old school jerseys, the blue ones, pull up those, like, old blue jerseys. Nuggets. They're so fun. Yeah, pull up the vintage blue Nuggets jerseys. I got to be honest, this is controversial. I don't love the name The Saints. I grew up with The Saints. I know it's a fleur de lis. It's New How Orleans. Cool that is jerseys. a cool logo. Those are badass. Wow, that's great. That's one of my jersey. favorite, like the old Nuggets jerseys. Those are badass. <laughs> that is cool. Um, I would wear that. Good How, colors. Good colors. Yeah, I'm with you. Saints, Saints is not great. It's, it's kind of religious. Well, boring. Well, it's like weird. You have the Saints. There's the Angels. There's the Devils. Oh. It's like how many, like, it's such a wide, Devils is so much cooler than fucking Angels. Who I know. The Angels? The Angels are boring. They, they don't do anything fun. Yeah. You got a bunch of alcoholics doing blow and hang, banging hookers called the Angels. It doesn't work. And there's right. no fear with an Angel. Los Angeles. City angels. of Angels. Yeah. But it's still boring. Still boring. City of Angels. But New Orleans, Saints. Saints come marching in. Isn't that your song? It is, but I don't know. We want to have the Tigers and a Saint. Yeah. Well, what else is here? You got to have the priest, the clergyman, the Padres. bishop. I guess you got Cardinals, but that's the bird. Cardinals isn't great either. 
Cardinals is kind of cool. It's kind of classic. It's classic. All right, I'm I'll cool give you with Cardinals. I'm, I'm okay. That's like a classic name. Better than the pigeon, I guess. Pigeons is kind of fun, man. Come the, on. the New York pigeon, the the, the the Brooklyn pigeons. That's true. If they're if they're like a wily kind of rough and tumble team, yeah. that'd be fun. Pigeons are just fun animals. They're just so fucking grungy in New York. Yeah, like, I do go to like Atlantic City and see seagulls. I'm like, well, you think you're fucking better than us? Uh, they got that attitude. They're on the beach. I'm in the fuck. Pigeons are dirty. Yeah, they're dingy as hell. They're rats with wings. They're f- I, I, I'm yeah, but you know what? I'll I'll get near a pigeon. I you're pro pigeon. I won't get near a rat, but I'll get near a pigeon. Interesting. Pigeons are part of the fucking city, baby. That's true, but what about the shitting? The shitting? They I shit mean, on the statues. They shit on the uh, on the buildings. Like your car gets shit on. I don't know. Yeah, you know what? It's their city too. That's what I say. They earned it. When I was they put g- their time in. They, 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 they're 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 fighting to survive, and I respect it. The way uh, they. They used to hide, they used to hide under the AC and you just hear them go yes. under the heater. Mm. <laughs> that's true. I'm like, oh my god, are they fucking in there? Yeah, I'm like get out true. of there. They'd run out like a family, just right. like hiding, Flapping. Yeah. Also, one of the great scenes in every cliche movie where the guy goes no and <laughs> <laughs> the pigeons fly away. You got to have that one. Give me a bit. Uh, well, if we're going down the uh, the race thing and the PC stuff. Fun idea. Maybe it's been done. Stop me if it has. I feel like we're doing a good job of like scrubbing racism now. You know, like we're getting rid of statues. We're taking the N word out of uh, Mark Twain, all these things. So I wonder if in like a hundred years, no one will believe we were racist because there's no evidence. If we keep taking stuff away, you know, like, no, they were bad. <laughs> it's like good. the book just says Jim. I don't know. What's the problem? Yeah, I think, I think obviously uh, there's Google and shit, but it's kind of funny to. Like yeah, of an Amish no guy, so, yeah. There will be there will be like uh, you know radio hosts. Like, there's no evidence that we were ever right. actually racist. Right. Like, that to me is the funniest part. Oh, that's interesting. Like some Rush Limbaugh type. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. He's like, oh yeah, we got the country from Indians. <laughs> we we kill. Be-. He's like, does that sound American to you? Right, right. Yeah, you. I just think you got to have a little bit of a criminal record. You need a record. The but maybe further it, we get away, although the only way it doesn't work is if we keep, if we stay violent. Oh, uh, yeah. No one's going to believe that we weren't violent. But the racism is interesting. Like, it's too hard to cover it all up. If though. we get, yeah, we can't cover it all up. We're going right. to have to get new statues. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Like, this is a, uh, this is a, I'm trying to think. Like, we get rid of a, uh, like a Robert E. Lee or something. Right. Well, he already did that. <laughs> yeah. We get rid of all the statues. Mm. I'm starting to feel this a little bit. Oh yeah, it, it's I a, haven't it, eaten. Maybe it's a it's a nothing bit because it's almost too too prove wrongable. Yeah, you that, know? it's funny. It's I'm it's worried, a silly like, idea. It, it might be too disprovable. Okay, okay. Let me well, let me give me another. All right, all right. I want to do a whole chunk, almost like a Carlin S thing, on things that we used to be terrified of that just stopped. We stopped caring about. Yeah. When I was a kid. Bermuda Triangle was the biggest news story. The plane is gone. The Bermuda- now, did we fix that? Is that over? Acid rain. What the hell happened to that? Ozone layer was a huge talk. Nobody talked about the ozone. And uh, the Native Americans used to cry all the time on commercials. I think they stopped crying. I guess with the casinos. <laughs> Maybe they feel better. But it's just funny how this is the biggest fear on the planet. And then it just 20 years go by and you go, oh, whatever happened to that triangle? I think the fears keep getting worse. Aha. Uh-huh. I think that's what happens. We're like now like now it's like ozone. Now it's like really bad climate change shit. Uh, I think it's still the ozone, is it not? Is the ozone not still, still a hole in the ozone? There's yeah. still a hole. But yeah. I feel like I heard about it every two days. The ozone. Watch out for the ozone. Oh, you're you're releasing that gas. It's gonna fuck up the ozone. I'm trying to think of the big it's funny though they talk about like the if you make it smaller fears, I think. Like mm. uh, Bermuda Triangle is a funny one. Yeah, that's something funny there. Now it's like I think if it's like they've been replaced and now they're so much worse. So like realize that whatever time you're living in, it's not as bad as it's going to be. Ah, yeah. Like that's this shit, good. it's only getting worse. That's good. You know, like, okay, like you're trying a while. Now you're like, uh, I mean, dude, we're living, we lived through a fucking pandemic and it, there's still a variant. Like it's still coming, like it's still bad. It still keeps going up. BP Gulf of Mexico. That's it. Like oh, you just yeah. have a black hole instead of a Bermuda, Bermuda right, Triangle. Right. Yeah. It just keeps getting worse. But it'd be funny if the Bermuda Triangle meets the global warming at a bar, and he's like, "Oh man, I used to run this town." He's like, 
you you got nothing, old man. You were yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bermuda Triangle's dead. I'm fucking. Uh, we don't even you know. respect you, Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, we got the ice caps melting. Fuck you. I it's- like the idea of uh, it being like the there's so much bad shit. Yeah, and it's like I'm a little slow. Well, you remember like the gas shortage in the seventies, and uh, you know the Russians. You know it was every. There's well, always a fear. Are, those things are all things. Like, yeah. I mean, the Cold War was a thing, right? But I mean, that's definitely, especially after you know, race for space, and then like nuclear weapons. Yeah, and, and like nuclear weapons were a thing. It's a th- and they are a thing, right? But when when you know, the fear is lingering after something horrible happens, so after World War Two or you know things like that, and then. Uh-huh. Like, it's tough because you're like, well, this is just bullshit. But then, co- like, COVID's a fear we never even anticipated. I know. That, to I know. me, is what's funny. is like, the shit you worry about, hey, guess what? There's shit that's going to hit you that you're not even aware of. Good point. Good point. Yeah, that's the ultimate fear. Yeah. It's like the monster in the movie you can't see, so you make it up. It's like being worried about Jason, and then a fucking piano just falls on your head. You know? <laughs> right, <laughs> it's right. Like, yeah, we got to change the Indian's name, and then you get fucking Zika. Well, that's what it all is. It's like <laughs> people are really at the core of it is like, is it a racist logo? Absolutely. But I think a lot of the anger really does come from just like needing a place to dump the anchor. I agree. Because we I all agree. feel powerless. Like, look at it this way. Like, you, could, you couldn't cancel Donald Trump. Mm. So you're canceling literally every celebrity who has sexual misconduct allegations. You're like- Okay, well, we can't. Trump has them, and we can't do anything to him. We can lead a mob against these people. Right? You know? It's really about like I'm angry and I need something. Yes, <laughs> that's yes. what people are fighting for. It's, it's easy to change the symbolic things and not anything deeper. Ooh, yeah, yeah like the alcoholism and the uh, there's like you know mistreatment or whatever of Native Americans that should come first before the logo. But I guess it's. It's all a step in the right direction, but I feel like the bigger problem, the real problems are so much harder to change. So if we can change this, we can feel good about we ourselves. We feel better about day. ourselves, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah dude. Well, that was go. a dark ending to this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> that ain't good. Man, I pulled out well, these bits I got, you know, racism taking away. Well, and same here. I, I probably opened the door with my fucking half baked horse shit. Uh, but yeah. we should we should plug gigs too, man. I mean, this pod is blowing up. We're, we're oh doing, yeah, this is going great. I'm I'm excited. Uh, see me on the road. I'm in Lexington, Kentucky, Ooh-wee. Kansas City, Missouri, Portland, Oregon, Royal Oak, Michigan, Boston, Ma- Boston, Massachusetts, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Millersville, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, uh, shit, uh, St. Louis, Missouri. All over the place, samuel.com slash shows. Hell yeah. Same here, marknormancomedy.com. Going to Nashville, going to Buffalo, going to West Palm Beach, all over the place. Brea in uh, California. Say hello, Madison, Portland, you name it. Get on the Patreon. We got to get some shirts. We got new Patreon ideas, too. So uh, we got a bar now. We got Danny Boy. We got Sally. This is about to really pop, folks. You're in on the ground floor. So tell a friend, spread the love, spread the cheeks, and queef it up. Thank you. No Rick and Morty talk this week. Oh! <laughs> next week, next week. Save that. Save that, that in, might be Matt. That's a great ending, yeah. Save yeah. that in. Save we'll that. save. Mark watched the pilot, and I haven't asked him. I'm saving it for the episode. All so right. Stick All around. Right. Got a lot of thoughts. We might be drunk. We might be drunk as long as we are hanging out you know we might be drunk raise a glass let's talk shit pet peeves rex and a bit maybe drunk we might be drunk yeah